I'm taking you to Medellin this time. We will explore some beautiful places including Parque RV Medellin and we will also be climbing Guatape. Meet the cutest resident of Medellin. Bienvenido a Medellín. I'm here after an epic adventure in the Tarona National Park. Click on the link above to find out full details. Welcome to Medellin, the city of eternal spring. And in this video, I'm taking you around the city, which is an inspirational tale from one of the most deadliest, most violent cities on the entire planet to a city that has completely transformed into a beautiful experience. So you get like street art, you get street food, you get culture, you get good fine dining, you get parties and so much more. It's a wholesome experience that will just draw you in and make you fall in love with it. And obviously, don't forget, it's a city of eternal spring. So it brings you the most incredible weather throughout the year. It pretty much stays constant. For that reason, they have beautiful flowers and also a flower festival. So without wasting more time, let's get going. What better place to start my Medellin journey than this on the very top of Comuna 13 and from being one of the deadliest most violent neighborhoods in perhaps the entire world it has come to this you know life color singing happiness and I'm just so happy to be part of it on such a beautiful day so first things first in order to get here the closest metro station is uh, San Javier and then you just walk and then it's uphill bring some comfortable shoes Camino 13 started its life when a lot of the guerrillas, who were far-left militants, started throwing farmers out who didn't want to join their cause. So they came just outside Medellin and started this neighborhood, which is like more like a slum. So the guerrillas started infiltrating to recruit more people. And then another person came in. I'm going to take his name only once because I don't want to dignify it. Pablo Escobar. He made the violence much worse and this place became a horrible place. As soon as I walked in, there was a massive explosion of color and life. And it was so incredible to see this beautiful neighborhood in such amazing light. So there are people who are selling anything and everything from clothes to shoes to street art to, you know, little paintings, books, anything you want. And then there's music, there's graffiti, and there's a lot of amazing street food, which I would definitely recommend. And don't forget to try a lot of fresh juices there's a lot of bars there as well if you want to try a beer with some good views this is amazing when you finally get to the very top you get to see this amazing incredible view of the entirety of medellin and that is to die for a fun fact people don't paint their houses here because if they do that means the house is completed and they need to start paying taxes how smart of them i would also recommend that you walk around into the street slightly off the tourist path not just too deep into it because you get to see the day-to-day -day life and honestly people are really sweet they're just amazing here it was so much fun i ended up spending half my day in comina 13. i had my lunch and i'm telling you the reason why it became more mainstream now medellin experience is not complete if you haven't taken the metro it is modern and it's one of the best metro systems in the entirety of the continent of South America. So it's, it's a mixture of trains, trams and also cable cars because Medellin is quite a hilly city. But what's more important is that it brings the city together. Half of the city's population takes the metro every single day. That's how important it is. The major transformation everyone talks about from Medellin, this is a big catalyst. I am in Plaza Botero in the downtown, the beating heart of Medellin. And this is where you get to see the normal life in full swing. People, it's a great place for people watching, especially 
and I would recommend coming here in the afternoon or in the evening. So the plaza has two interesting things. The very first one is this building, the Museum of Culture, which is free by the way. And it started as an interesting building, but they ran out of money, I think. And yeah, that's what the result was. The second are the interestingly disproportionate statues of Botero. I think 33 of them in total. And they're really interesting and fascinating. So the people line up to take photos with them. And I think people from Medellin really love it. By the way, the people from Medellin and around are called Paisas. Let me show you around. If you click on that subscribe button, I will bring you some more amazing travel destinations every week. So click on it now. I am in the Simone Boulevard Park, the greatest mind for his time. So he got independence for quite a few of the Central South American countries. You will find in every big city a statue, a park or a square named after him and rightfully so. Behind him is the Metropolitan Cathedral, which isn't the oldest cathedral in Medellin, but it holds the biggest treasures for the city. The reason I came here on a Wednesday specifically is because it opens only on Wednesdays and Sundays for Mass, and that's the only time we can go inside. Before I take you inside, I want to talk to you about the, the downtown, and honestly, there's so many young people here who are homeless and clearly addicted to drugs, and that's the part that really breaks my heart. This, this is the future of this amazing country. People here are so nice. You want to hug everyone. They're so sweet. Colombians are amazing. And it really breaks my heart to see them in, in this condition, seriously. So if you ever feel like you need to use the famous C drug, please think about how far reaching the consequences are. Let's go inside. The cathedral has many beautiful artworks and here's an interesting fact. It's made of bricks and one of the largest baked clay structures in the entire world. And this is the oldest church of Medellin. I mean, it's not special inside, but it's worth a quick stop. Let's continue. Medellin has a lot of beautiful green spaces, but I wanted to mix it up a little bit with the views of the city. So we're going all the way up to Parque Arui, and it actually kills two birds with one stone because we also get to ride the cable car. Let's go! The big reason the metro is so important for Medellin is because it brings the entire city together. These communities were not included in the city, you know, there was like a big disconnect, but it brought the whole thing together and it became the lifeline of the entire city. First things first, wow, that has to be the most amazing cable car ride I've ever done in a city. And it's so cheap for what it delivers, it's absolutely incredible. So there's no entrance fee to the park if you want to walk around on your own like me. I wanted to experience a little bit of the fresh air, you know, clear my mind. I'm dealing with a little bit of a heartbreak, but I think this is the perfect place to come and heal yourself. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've already seen some beautiful flowers, some birds. There's so much stillness and quiet here and it's just absolutely incredible. So let's walk around, see a bit and uh, then we head back because I have one other place to show you. The trails in the park are not very well labeled, unfortunately. So I would recommend joining either a guided tour or you can download maps.me and download the map for this area before coming here. It's a really huge park. Trust me, you don't want to get lost here. Park RV in Medellin became my favorite spot in the city. It has 54 miles of walkable trails and it covers 16,000 hectares. Well, we need to start heading back down because I want to take you to the Botanical Gardens of Medellin. But before we do that, I have a little confession to make. So, I had a little grateful feeling, you know, just I was thinking about Medellin and how I have transformed in the last 7-8 years. So I used to be a total city boy, you know, loved partying, going to restaurants, hanging out with people all the time, you know, everything organized and yeah, that was me. But I've transformed so much into this person who just likes to pack a lunch and just wander off on his own into the woods. And I'm really happy that I got to enjoy that life and I'm enjoying this life as well. And I'm really thankful for that. Well, that was me. Let's get going. The 
before coming to Medellin, I was checking which places to go and I have a friend here who told me not to miss the botanical gardens. So I took his advice and I'm passing it on to you. This is the botanical garden and you do not want to miss this place. It's really beautiful, really refreshing. But the thing that I really like is that it's aesthetically pleasing. They have a lot of different varieties of plants, but they're not just thrown in. They're really well put together and I really like this place. Walking around is fun. Also, there are a lot of birds here. So, you know, the sounds of the nature, absolutely amazing. But if all of that is not a reason good enough for you to come, I have one more. They have a mariposario, a house of butterflies. We can go learn about them, see them fluttering around in this little globe. Now, unfortunately, it's raining a little bit, so they've closed that. But I'm really hoping it stops soon so I can take you there. Until then, let's go check out the park. What I really liked is that you don't just hang out with the butterflies, you actually learn a little bit about them. This is definitely worth visiting, don't miss it. What am I doing with a French castle in Medellin, you ask? Well, it's not quite an outlier to be honest because there's a lot of immigration here from the French, Belgian and German. So you will see churches in like pretty German, you know, Gothic style, French Romantic style, and that's not surprising at all. So I found this quite close to my hotel. So I came for a quick stroll. I won't be going inside because one, I don't like museums. Two, I can only go inside with a guide. Three, the tours are only in Spanish. So that seemed like a bit of a waste, but it's a beautiful place and has gorgeous gardens. Let me show you around. The castle was built in 1930. And it was actually the house of a physician, Jose Uribe. And then it was bought later and then converted into a museum where it has beautiful gardens. Hats off to the people who maintain it. Meet the cutest resident of Medellin. Isn't he adorable? Saying hello. Oh. And here's their third buddy. Oh my god, they're the cutest little things. This is the area of El Poblado, and this is where I'm staying. Well, it's not just these buildings, it's quite a nice diverse area, really popular with tourists and quite safe. That's why I'm staying here. Let me take you on a little tour. On a signal right opposite Park Poblado, there are these guys who perfected their art. So when the signal goes red, they start their thing. And they've timed it perfectly to when it goes green. Let's go check it out. That's all well and good for the day, but what about you want to party like Colombians? You know, they're famous in the entire world for that. So there's an area called Parque Geras. Let's go there, check out the party scene. Colombia is my new travel favorite and I have a lot more information for you. So click on the link above and check out my Colombia playlist. Welcome to Watape, the best day trip you could do from Medellin. Also the worst one because it's turned into a little bit of that expectation versus reality thing where you come for the views and come to like a million people all around you taking photographs. While you could totally do this on your own from Medellin, you just need to take the bus from North Terminal. I decided to come with a tour because it saves a lot of hassle and it was only $40, includes lunch and a ride on the boat on the lake as well. So I got picked up at seven, we left. It was supposed to take two hours, took three because of the traffic. We got here and there was a huge queue. So a big part of enjoying places is, you know, for me, is kind of getting into themselves. And there was already so many people. It took ages to come up the 650 steps, which was annoying as hell for me. 
but we are here. Let's see what this place has to offer. Let's enjoy it. By the way, this is not a natural dam. It's an artificial reservoir made by the Colombia government. And it's the biggest in the country, produces 35% of the energy of the Colombia, which is amazing. So let me show you around. The rock is really impressive. It's over 200 meters tall. It's actually private property, which is owned by one of the original climbers. Luis Lopez was the one who built these stairs. Climbing Guatape is a definite must. We've just arrived in Guatape town and it actually took us longer to come down the stairs than to go up. So it's not very far from the rock by the way. And we're gonna walk around a little bit, get a little bit of the history and don't forget to pack yourself a light jacket because it got cold quite quickly. Also, don't forget to pack yourself an umbrella while you're at it. So let me take you around. Let's see what this colorful town has to offer us. Guatape town is really colorful, has a beautiful church and it's easily walkable, which is really helpful after climbing Watape. We did a really delicious lunch at a local house. The food was amazing because it was all homemade. And then we took a boat and we are on an island and I'm going for a swim. It got a little bit chilly, so I didn't swim as much, but the area is really beautiful. And this is a huge bonus. My only goal was climbing Watape, but this is a nice surprise. My Colombia adventure continues. I left Medellin and I am in Jardín now, which is absolutely stunning. So click on the link above and meet me here. Otherwise, this is what you're going to miss.